welcome into First Strike. I'm joined with two of the apex predators of the octagon and subhuman gacho and MMA Jeff. And we're here to take you guys through three early looks to try to cook these books. First Strike fastly becoming the preeminent location for all your early fight breakdown needs. And it's going to be a banger on Saturday. We got a 5 p.m. start. There's been some cancellations on this card. So they pushed that start time back. In fact, Jeff and Sub, keep your phones on. Dana may be calling to see if you guys are ready to fill in at the last <laughs> minute here. But we got ourselves a fight game to get into tonight. Sub, how are we feeling? Well, I am looking forward to the call. Uh, me and Jeff on the curtain jerker. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know how you guys line that fight, but uh, it's going to be a banger. So I'm looking forward to it, man. These Apex cards, they've been uh, our bread and butter. Lots of li landmines in this one, but uh, lots of ways to make money too, I think. So I'm looking forward to it. How about you, Jeff? I'm looking forward to it as always. Uh, I don't know. I, I thought Mike was uh, talking about me and you tag teaming somebody in the fight. I, I don't know if he was talking about me and you going at it, but uh, <laughs> I'm I got my phone's always on. So I'm rolling if we need to. <laughs> Well, we've got ourselves a, a matchup to get into here. It's going to be a fun breakdown tonight. We've got some great plus money spots for you guys and some fights that really jumped off the page at each of us as we started talking about these the other day a little bit uh, in prep for tonight's videos here. So let's get to business. We're going to open this thing up in a prelim battle. The number 93 bantamweight and Gregorio going out there against Kazuma, the number 119 bantamweight, Jeff. Take it away. Talk to us about getting paid. I got to say, does Kazuma really even belong in the UFC? You know, he came out there. He's he's getting touched up early. He's 0-2 in his UFC career so far. Uh, Nakamura, he, you know, he came out there. He touched him up with the left. He followed it up, fighting against Armfield. He came out and got in, uh, in and Kazuma got touched up by the right on that one. Uh, he had a couple of decisions previous to that, and then uh, he got hit with a flying knee. Seems like every time this guy's taking something in the head, he's getting knocked out. You know, you got Gre Gregorio there. On the other hand, he's also winless, a 0 and 1 in uh in the UFC. But uh, I think he's in a big bounce back spot here. He comes out hard and heavy with some heavy fists. He's got four uh four of his six KOs ended um in round one, and I kind of expect that to continue. As I had mentioned, you know, does Kazuma really even belong here? Is he fighting the tougher competition coming from Japan, training in Japan versus some of these guys that are training on a regular against better better competition? So I'm going to roll with uh, Gregorio. Gets this done inside the distance at minus 110. I like it, Jeff. Hard to know what to make of Kazama. I think uh, I think I have similar feelings as you do. You know, pretty slick grappler, but can't really get it to the ground with his judo and doesn't really have any success wrestling. I, I tend to think he gets knocked out as well. But in the meantime, we've got a heavyweight contest on our hands, and uh, this one's interesting. Combined record, 17-1 and one among these two. Carl Williams, the wrestler, with just one loss and 10 wins against a, uh, well, a pretty darn good kickboxer in Denise. This is a grappler versus wrestler contest, and uh, we're going to see who gets one step closer to the rankings. Where are you going with this one, Mike? Interesting battle, right? Heavyweights in a smaller cage, and we've got some guys that like that. Well, at least one of them likes to go out there and finish his fights. He likes to finish his supper. As they say, you mentioned it collectively 10 and one is Carl Williams. Interesting spot though, with this guy, he's a big takedown artist. He's a big wrestling guy. He's got wrestling in his background. He's averaging five takedowns per fight. Most recently out there, uh, you know, seven takedowns, a judge's decision. In fact, he's three and zero in his UFC. He's got one uh, victory out of the Dana white contender series, all four of them by decisions, a guy that likes to leave it to the hands of the judges on the other side. We got a kickboxer in Juanita Denise, and uh, this guy here, seven and zero in his combat career. Every single one of his fights has been by stoppage. In fact, until his most recent UFC debut, every one of them was in the first round. He did get a little uh, taken to the ground by Austin Lane. Had to get back up. Had to get out of that first round and win that thing decisively in round number two. And a lot of folks feel this line's not wide enough. Carl Williams should be a big favorite for a reason it's his wrestling ability and his ability not just to throw outside bombs but he likes to go right up the middle and try to get you with that straight jab and he throws with some power behind it i think the key to victory for denise in this spot is going to be simply don't go to the ground 
Don't let him get touched up. Don't let him get a spacing. Use your kickboxing and all your weapons to your advantage. Uh, when we look back at this thing, again, I mentioned the situation where he doesn't want to let the judges figure this thing out. And we got a live steam alert. This thing opened up at plus 205 on the Denise side. And people still thought it wasn't enough, at least from the alleged sharp UFC cappers. It's down to 185. And it's continuing to drop. 170s out there on some of the books as well. So you're going to want to get this one while it's out. I think Denise comes into this thing. It's a gateway fight in this heavyweight division. We know they like to move them up the ladder quickly and then see if they can go out there and stand and bang with the best of the division. And Dana White's got himself a nice one on his hands here. I'm going to go with Janita Denise, and I got him at plus 185. Getting us paid in this heavyweight battle, boys. It's going to be a fun one. I can't wait for this fight to go down. I got to say, Mike, I, I like that look. And uh, as you had mentioned, if you're going to take him, you're better off taking him now because the line's probably going to go continue swinging in his favor. As Mike had mentioned, it's getting steamed. And uh, wrapping us up here, Subs bringing us to the featherweight co-main event with number 46, Mariscal versus number 20, Damon Jackson. Sub, what's the winning ticket on this one? Yeah, glad to see these two in the uh, co-main. I think they deserve it. Uh, Chepe, you know, he's only been in the UFC three fights, but he has paid his dudes. He's been around for a while. Uh, this guy's a quality kickboxer. Uh, and he can, uh, he can make fights dirty. He's a real junkyard dog, pretty well-rounded. On the other side, you got a UFC vet in Jackson. He's been around for a while, six and four in the UFC with one draw and one no contest. Uh, he's got some liabilities, the Jackson side. He can be a little chinny at times, and uh, he has been known to slow down in rounds three, uh, partly because he goes after it. But he's known for uh, some really great grappling, quality wrestler. He's got very good leg kicks and uh, <clears throat> not a great striking game. He tends to play a lot of high guard, but. Still pretty decent quality. He's the much, much bigger fighter in this contest. I don't think the numbers that you look at on the screen really tell the whole story until you see these two men in the ring. I think we're going to find that Damon Jackson is a lot bigger, and I like him here. Um, his losses come to some really, really high-quality opponents, like some Billy Q and Dan Ige most recently. Before that, it was Aliyah Tapuria, the current champion in the featherweight division. Um Chepe's wins, on the other hand, you know, he did get the better of uh, Trevor Peak in his UFC debut, but Trevor Peak is not very skilled. He's kind of a brawler. Chepe able to get the takedowns in that fight. Not really going to help him here against Jackson, as I see Jackson being the uh, better wrestler and the far better grappler. Jack Jenkins, he was losing round one, round two, goes for a judo throw, and uh, Jack, or Jenkins, pardon me, has a Bit of a freak injury that ends the fight. The Sherry fight most recently was the one that really had me wanting to get on Jackson here when I started looking into things. Uh, Sherry is a French kickboxer who had a lot of success taking uh, Chepe down here and even put Chepe into a couple sub attempts. And Chepe really had to work to fight his way out. I'm not even sure Chepe won that fight. I think he was a little bit lucky to get the split decision. And this fight, you know, all the things that uh, Chepe does to get himself out of trouble, like grab the clinch and go to the wrestling and those sorts of things, they're not going to help him in this fight. He's going against a much bigger guy where he's going to have to find a way to get inside without getting taken down. And I think this line is just crazy, quite frankly. Uh, I, I tend to think that Jackson is very live here with multiple pass. So I've got a couple different bets on this one. Uh, firstly, you know, I don't go to these a whole lot, but I like Damon Jackson plus three and a half on the spread, meaning if he just wins one round on all the judges' scorecards, we'll cash that at a minus 105. If he gets this, this fight to the ground just one time, he's going to win that round, and I think he's going to do so multiple rounds. Um, as much as I said Jackson was a little bit chinny before, Chepe, not a power puncher, so I don't expect him to get him out there early. If he does at all, it'll be late, but I, I don't foresee it. And I love the Jackson money line here. I think he's got multiple pass to victory. I think that sub is live. But more than that, I think he can just win two rounds with the grappling. He takes his back once. That's the end of a round. He gets him down once. That's the end of a round. I think he can bank minutes and rounds in this one and win a decision. Fantastic, you guys. There are four plays on three fights 
for this big Saturday card. It's going to be a ton of fun. Make sure you guys tune in Saturday for the live show. You guys know that's where the dough is made. Going to take that fight to the bookies. In the meantime, guys, enjoy the rest of your week. Get your prep in for this UFC card. You know the fellas will be ready to attack these bookies, and I cannot wait to get that money with you guys. Good luck with your bets. We'll see you guys this week.